Welcome to Ninja's Papers. Today we're going to talk about painting up the Chalice of Ulsharon, an endless spell for my Flesh Eater Quartz army. Hello and welcome back to another one of my tutorials. Um, so we're gonna start off here with some bone white and we're just doing a Xenazole Prime on this chalice. This is a very fun and easy build for you. So if you're ever confused about how to do this, this is one manner that works. I like to get the inner side just a little bit, uh, really not focusing on getting everything coated evenly here. The idea here is to allow to have some of that black remain in the shadow. And that means do not over uh, expose areas to too much paint. Uh, you want to have the highest or things that are going to hit the sunlight from a 45 to a 50 degree angle from the zenith uh, show through. Another technique is I go on the other side, and yes, I do not want to fill in the black portions of the model, but I want it to be just a lighter shade of that bone color to, to identify the, it as bone and not lose any of those details to obscurity, but at the same time retain the shadows between the bones. And it's quite easily done if you have an airbrush, if you have a paintbrush, it's uh, a little bit trickier. Uh, it just takes a long time uh, to be able to take a picture, use it as a reference, know where the shadows is, and just highlight gently the top. Now, I personally do not like paint brushing white. I do it as a necessity. If I can get away with airbrushing white, I will, because white is just a pain in the neck color. Okay, so next up, I'm going to airbrush the bottom with Mephiston Red. I like that red. It's a nice, dull pattern. And I get close to the chalice. So just be careful not to target the chalice itself and undo all the work you've done. Now, if a little bit gets on the bottom side, that's okay because light in itself reflects the colors around it. So there is going to be some red going on to the bottom of the chalice, but you just don't want any of that red on the top top of the chalice because it's not really reflecting the blood on the bottom except for that portion where it just leaks over and there I actually chose to do uh, a little bit of glazing to get that effect instead of doing the airbrush on the top of the chalice there where the blood is creeping over just so that I can have that control I think there's a place for an airbrush and I think there's also a place for a paintbrush I use both in conjunction to achieve the result that I do achieve and I use all my tools uh, as when they are needed I don't exclusively use one tool uh, over another. If I had a hammer, every problem is not a nail. I realize that there are gonna be other kind of problems uh, to, for me to solve. So I use a tool that's appropriate and that's most convenient and that does the job the quickest and the easiest for me as a painter. I'm a bit of an army painter. I do have quite a few armies that I really want to get done in my lifespan and in order to do so, if I can go on and take something that'll be easier I will take it to be easier uh, and use that technique to my advantage using the Iowata CS uh, I have a link in the description for my Amazon affiliates link so if you're interested in getting one of those you can among with other things now here I'm going to do a little bit of glazing so I see the consistency right there when you draw upon it on the wet palette it draws back on you it's about the consistency that you're going for and when you're glazing in itself you sort of just like it's almost I would say washing getting rid of the pools and then washing it again you want to wick your brush that means you paint you build the paint up into the belly of the brush and then you take like a napkin or something that's going to sop up some of that wetness so this way it's not overtly wet and if you ever seen any pooling areas you don't want it to pool so you take the, the paint that's in the pooling areas and you spread it out that's what I'm doing I'm just spreading it out because I know 
know I have a large area to cover. So I'm going to spread out any of that pooling using those areas as poolings to sop up and then spread it out some more. And I go through the mini like this. Let's talk a little bit about this miniature in itself, the Chalice of Usharan. All right, it is believed that to be the manifestation of a sacred cup held by Usharan. This bone wrought goblet is continually filled with the blood of those slain in its presence. When the gore inside overflows, the flesh eaters upon whom it slops up bestows the unnatural vitality, their most grievous wounds healing, and their dead rising to fight once more. Uh, this is actually a pretty cool chalice to have in the battle if you're playing uh, Age of Sigmar, if you're playing uh, another game like D&D. &D. You could always has, have this in a room and have an ominous presence. Now, I, I hurried ahead to see. I did multiple layers of these glazing. And right now, I am just targeting the highlights. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to switch over to... Uh, more of a flash get more of a, a flashier red you can add a little bit of red ink from vallejo to get that effect uh into your paint but definitely you want to have a lighter red in order to do the highlights and again glaze those do exactly the same thing as you did before but just try to get the tops of things anything that you want to be pronounced uh two of the things that i really focus on into this miniatures are the tops of the cloud blood bubbles and then the faces of those skulls because I really want them to pop out. I don't want to lose that uh, definition and making it all the same. So it's what I hit over there. So yeah, the Chalice of Usharan in AOS, uh, really quickly, is uh, something that actually heals wounds for those that are around it. Um, so there's definitely something that you can use within your army. Casting value of six. Okay, so next up, uh, I rolled out from Green Stuffed uh, World Roller. Uh, and I got from White Metal Games, which are my flagstones, which is just, um, it's with my army. It's all tuned into my army. My army has the flagstones with some of the graveyard bases. And you can see those in my uh, past videos with my flesh eater quartz. So yeah, just trying to get one of the edges of the flagstone, just the bottom edge and leaving a shadow. So next up, I'm doing highlights, and uh, while doing the highlights on this new brush, I am learning the pressure of that trigger, and you know what happens when you're learning, right? Oh yeah, a mistake. So what I do is, of course, logically, I lick my mini. Yeah, that's the kind of dedication that I have. Yeah, I... I <laughs> lick my mini because I had nothing else to do. Some people lick their brushes. I lick my minis, okay? I lick my bases when I want to sop it up. So now I'm just using the air pressure to get rid of my spit. <laughs> How gross is that? Do not touch my minis, folks. Do not touch my minis. You now know where they have been. <laughs> I bring back the gradient, but the, honestly, look how easy it is to recover from something so disastrous. It's like, oh no, I made a mistake. What am I going to do? Wait around for it to dry? I don't think so. I'm not going to give it an opportunity to adhere. I done licked that sucker. Not that I advise licking your minis, but... <laughs> There it is. So what I'm trying to do is cover a little bit less of an area so I can get a real good highlight. And you can see the transition right there. Now time for the middle. And I'm using uh, any brown will do, any kind of earth brown. But I'm personally using Steinal Res Brown. I do like Steinal Res primers. I like the color primers because they are lay flat. So it's kind of hard to make a mistake with them because even if you put too much on there, it'll lay flat on you. And I do have a link in the description. Again, uh, Amazon affiliate link. Uh, the channel gets a kickback if you, and at no cost to you. Uh, if you try that now I'm doing a brown glaze and this is brown number two and that's from war colors I love war colors but you can use any kind of things with a glaze uh, what with, with a gel medium so any of your scale 75s would do the same uh, they actually thin down so nicely for a glaze and it looks like dust and order to add a color variation within that base. All right, last but definitely not least, you're gonna to wanna to do the rims of your bases. And I do like the rims of your bases being black. Again, I'm using Steinal Res Primer, link in the description if you want your own, because it's lay flat, so it's kind of hard to leave brush strokes onto your miniature when you're using Steinal Res Primer. I'm, saying, I'm not saying that it's impossible, but it's hard to, and that makes it easier for me.
And there you have it. Now, slowly but surely, my Flesh Eater Quartz army is coming to a completion, piece by piece. I'm really glad that this is marking a milestone to the completion of my Flesh Eater Quartz army. Now, if you want to support the channel, there is an Amazon affiliate link down below. Now, if you click onto it, a percentage comes back to the channel at zero cost to you. And if you don't want to support us that way, that's fine. I'm really happy you just came along for the ride. And if you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.